Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we've got looks at aerosols from GEOS. There's a full simulation of the July 2012 coronal mass ejections from SVS. We've got several items in space weather to discuss as well, and we're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star where we find it was a quiet day up on the sun. Sunspots are numerous but lacking complexity. Solar flaring dropped back down a little bit. But we've got amplified solar wind and a minor geomagnetic storm condition here this morning at Earth. And so we'll start there. Let's take a look at the solar wind. The coronal hole stream has certainly arrived as you see purple, the plasma speed, rising from ambient quiet conditions. It's difficult to tell if the small CME signature is in there. It may have just been swallowed by the coronal hole stream. But we've got low-level magnetic storm conditions here starting last night and continuing this morning. The coronal hole stream should remain amplified for a few more days as it is still facing Earth and pushing that enhanced stream our way. Kind of looks angry, doesn't it? Like the sorting hat about to assign someone to Slytherin. Eyes on the solar wind and on the sunspots. They are lacking complexity at the moment, but we are watching the left half here as they are turning in to face Earth. Need to gain complexity if they want to make bigger flares. Now we're going to Geos, and this is the aerosol animation. The reddish return is black carbon, mostly from wildfires. Pinkish purple is dust, mostly coming off the Sahara here. Blue is aerosolized sea salt spray that got lifted. And green, those are the sulfates which get concentrated within the low pressure cells and the wind flows into them. This high level of data detail used to take post analysis and lots of model tweaks. Now, the technology is able to deliver this to us at low level process data nearly by the moment. Impressive and almost hypnotizing to watch our world through these eyes. Lastly on the science front, NASA has fully modeled the July 2012 CME Bonanza. Several major eruptions from the sun that month, including one that may have been close to a Carrington level eruption. Luckily that one was not aimed at Earth, but it's scary to think how many people wouldn't have been prepared if it all went down 13 years ago. Still scary to think how many people aren't prepared today. Earth is due to take such an impact from one of those blasts. Geologic indicators suggest we get hit every 150 to 200 years. Some studies say once a century. It's been 166 years since the last impact of that magnitude, so we're in the red zone no matter how you slice it. Not exactly the best time for Earth's magnetic field protection to be weakening in a pole shift, but those are the cards we have been dealt. Folks, we've got a pole shift conference coming later this month, one in September too, along with Dr. Dunning coming to Founders Weekend. Big events there and more coming in October and November as well. Find a time to come see us. Book your stay at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got eyes on space weather, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.